worth like this one I saw online it's about a thousand dollars which is way expensive if you ask me and one of my toxic traits is I look at stuff like that and I'm like well, I could make that with my own two hands so that's what I did and I'm going to show you how I made my custom headboard which I love I made it in this olive -y, like corduroy fabric I just I'm obsessed with it guys so I wanted to show you so with that being said let's just jump right in to start I unwrapped mattress pads I bought which will be used for the foam cushioning of each of the four panels and for the size of foam I needed this was just the most economical choice I got these at Walmart but I'll have a list of all the materials and measurements below in the description box the plywood sheet you see here is one of four that I got cut at Lowe's for free so I'm just using it to mark the foam so that I can then cut it to size and then I very sketchily use scissors to cut the foam a box cutter would probably make more sense but those are just a little scary then I used some spray adhesive to attach each piece of the foam to each piece of the plywood after that I took a roll of batting and cut it into four pieces for each of the headboard panels adding an additional about four inches of fabric on each side so that I could then begin attaching the batting to the back of the plywood using my staple gun as I went around I made sure to just pull the batting top before stapling so that it would lay flat and smooth on the front of the panel and I paid really close attention to making the corner smooth before cutting the excess off. Next I took this inexpensive white fabric to act as a dust cover and did the same process to cover the batting. Here you can see the folding method I used for all of the corners and, and by the way you can absolutely skip adding a dust cover. I only added this because I wanted to be really sure the unevenness of the batting didn't show through my upholstery fabric because any imperfections are really highlighted by the vertical stripes in the corduroy. I also wanted the option to switch out the fabric easily in the future so ultimately not a big deal if you go straight to adding the upholstery fabric after the batting. Next I took this picture hanging hardware that can hold 100 pounds. It comes with these two 12 inch cleats and screws so you'll want to take not the cleat that has ridges on it but the second one that's totally smooth and attach it so that the opening is pointed down to the bottom of the panel and the holes are toward the top of the panel. This is how you hook it onto the other cleat which will be attached to the wall so you know it doesn't fall on you in your sleep or anything. Okay I'm sorry I'm not trying to unlock a new fear so let's just move on then. And that's how it looks after the dust cover and cleat is secured and this is a close-up of what it looks like with the batting you can see the blue foam peeking through compared to the white dust cover on top next I took my pretty taut fabric which is this olive green corduroy I got from Joann's and I began attaching it and I was just a lot more careful and methodical with this fabric so I'd work in sections once I finish a section on one side I would do the same section on the other side before moving on to make sure that they mirrored one another and I wasn't pulling this fabric at all I was just making sure it was smooth and checking underneath to make sure the lines were straight and again the vertical stripes are a dead giveaway if things aren't symmetrical so I was really careful to make it look uniform on the front. Another tell that something is handmade are the corners so I took my time with those and basically made a hospital corner by smoothing the fabric on the side of the panel underneath and then folding the fabric on top of the panel over it before securing with staples. Again I just recommend taking your time with this part because it really pays off with the finished product. So in review I first added the foam and batting then the dust cover and lastly the top fabric and I did this four times for each panel. Then all that's left was removing my old headboard and putting up the remaining cleats from the hardware kits so that I could hang each of the panels. I made sure to measure the middle of my wall and work out from there based on the widths of each panel. And finally all I had to do was slide the panels onto the hardware. I ended up with a dupe or a thousand dollar headboard but I made it for under three hundred dollars. Check the description box for more options to make this project even more affordable and thanks so much for watching. Bye!